Well, good morning. This is Tim Sefton. I'm here at Sefton Motors with that guy, Daniel. Love that guy. And we wanted to give a short overview of the why. Why are we doing this project? Why the Melvin engine is key? What are the underpinnings that are driving us forward in this uh, project and this product? And there were some comments from our last update. You know, this is all very good about the bits and pieces of the engine of the Melvin. But how does this fit into the big picture? So we want to take a few minutes and just go through uh, some of the fundamental drivers. Now, we've gone through this in the past many years ago. But uh, if you've followed us and been with us over the time, you'll, you'll know these. So you may want to skip this update. But if not, I think you'll find some interest here in how we see the development of energy uh, generation and use in the next few years here in the U.S. and, and elsewhere and see if that doesn't ring, uh, see if that doesn't resonate with you as it does with us. So uh, enjoy and we'll, we'll talk to you uh, a little later. Today we use two primary energy infrastructures to deliver our energy needs. One is at the gas pump, petroleum, and the other is electricity. And that electricity comes to us over this rather large infrastructure with generation plants, plants, transmission lines, and distribution. These are all interconnected across the U.S. via the grid system, which is a rather intricate system today. The petroleum also has infrastructure behind it from the pumps to the refinery, to the storage, to the trucking. All these infrastructures are in place today and deliver our electricity to the U.S. And look instead to the grid and how it's changing today. One, we have an impact of electric vehicles. Their purchase and use is growing rapidly. They have a high demand on the electric grid. How? Is that going to impact the grid? In addition to that, we have the climate change uh, activity that is also impacting the grid. Here we see a chart of the high heat in Dallas that is impacting the demand for electricity. Many of these threats have already been identified for the grid and are documented and people are addressing them. But there's still more threats about the, grill, the grid and the infrastructure that we use today. Look at the California fires. That's going to go on for years to come. And they're just turning off power as these threats of fire become uh, more and more prevalent. This is a chart of the incidents due to weather of some of those outages or impacts to the grid. In addition to that, you have the terrorist uh, threat that is now uh, focusing to some extent on the grid. What, what What is going to become here? Are we all going to be just like this fellow operating in the dark? No, I don't think so. And that's where our Melvin comes into play. Now today there are many fans of solar energy and capturing solar energy. and We, of course, are part of that fan base. But we look at it a little bit differently. If I look at solar energy just from the strictly the perspective of solar panels and photovoltaics I'm missing a huge piece of the energy that's coming into the earth here as this this diagram describes of all the earth that comes all the sunlight that comes to the earth there's only a very small percentage of the wavelength of that energy that is actually uh, captured by solar panels and turned back into uh, or used for a generation of electricity. Most of that energy, or a large portion of it, is in the form of heat and is, is not captured by any means today. Generating electricity from heat is not a new story. It's been done for ages. This is a model of a, one of the original steam engines. But we don't use steam. We're looking to this fellow, the 1860s, Robert Sterling, who came up with this Sterling engine, which just uses heat. It 
shuttles a piece of air back and forth between hot and cold to expand and to contract to generate energy. And we've used some of that technology or his thinking of the engine cycle to build our Melvin today using some of the latest uh, state-of-the-art materials and uh, processes for generating that. The Melvin runs on heat. Heat produced from any type of fuel, solar, anything byproduct of an industrial process. It runs on heat. It's an external combustion. There's nothing going into the engine. There's nothing coming out of the engine. You just put the head of it in heat and it runs. If I look at the average use of electricity in today's home in the U.S., about 11,000 kilowatt hours per year. It comes down to about 30 kilowatt hours per day. Can't we generate that amount ourselves locally? We don't see the demise of any of the current infrastructures for delivering energy in the U.S. today. We only see their augmentation into a new and different type of microgrid that both has components of the major infrastructures, but also of the locally generated power component. If we look to history, we see this time and time again, this transformation from a centralized system like the mainframes to a widely distributed, locally computed environment like the phones. From like the railroads of the past to autopilots of today. Why can't we do this with our power generation? Let's get the flux capacitor in gear. Check out the Melvin, see what we're doing. Get hot and run. Thanks for watching.